Okay, so coming up, I talked to the author, this guy named TJ English. He's written two books on Cuba, one called Havana Nocturne, which is about how the mob Nocturne. tried to take over Havana in the 50s. Oh, yeah, and yeah, If you yeah, watch Godfather 2, they talk about that's that. Dope. And number two, he just came up with a new one called The Corporation. It talks about how when Cuban refugees came here in the 70s, they shared a mob called The Corporation. Okay. And they had like an underground lottery that they that's made all their wild. money off. And you in the city of New Jersey in here. So I got to talk to them about that. They're okay. going to make a movie. Leonardo DiCaprio is going to probably produce it. On the first one or on the second one? On the second one, the one about the mob here called oh, okay. The Corporation. That's Benito del Toro is attached. Well, because, you know, when I went to Cuba in Havana, they actually still have those casinos. Yeah. Like I walked into the casinos and it's like you could tell there was big money out in the island. Yeah. <laughs> like in the 50s and 60s. Well, were the casinos, because I, I went to Havana too. I didn't go into the casinos, but are they, are they still letting people bet? No, 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 you can't, <laughs> you, what? you can't gamble. Let anybody bet. Yeah, well, like, what are you talking about? This is, that's like the antithesis the, of communism. The casinos are there, the decoration is preserved. Like you walk in there and you get a feeling for what the scene was so like. So what happened is the Italian mob if you watch Godfather 2, like, you remember how he yeah. goes to Cuba? That, that's based on true events. So the Italian mob in the wow. 40s and 50s went to Havana and started running the casinos. Now, when Castro took over, one of the first things they did is they yeah, kicked them, cut th the them out. out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, and so that, that was a huge thing. So anyway, I got to talk to the, uh, you know, the author about the corporation, and it's coming up right here. Check it out. PJ English, one of, one of my favorite authors. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to hear. Um, so I definitely want to talk about the, the new book, The Corporation, um, about the Cuban underworld, uh, focusing on, on the bolita. A lot of people don't know what that is, little ball, it's a Cuban lottery. But before we get to that, I, I want to know what drew you to writing about um, Cuban history and the Cuban underworld to begin with? Well, I was born in late uh, the late 50s, and so I was a child in the 60s when... Uh, Fidel Castro and the relationship between Cuba and the United States was a dominant story on a daily basis in the United States. You would see it on the TV news over dinner at night. And, and I became fascinated with this history, particularly Castro, of course, because he was a young guy who had taken over a country and now he was, for reasons I didn't fully understand, the enemy of the United States. And so this stayed with me. It was just part of my childhood. It was a subject matter that I always had an interest in based on that. And then eventually I became a crime writer and I started writing about organized crime in the United States. And this led me back to the subject of Cuba. This was something that I'd had the interest in. And I, I knew that there had been this era that the mafia had established a base in Havana in the 1950s. So it was kind of uh, logical for me to put these two things together. Let's go ahead and start with the corporation because that's that's the latest one and that's the one yeah. that's creating buzz in Hollywood because um, film rights are involved and I know Leonardo DiCaprio signed on to produce it. A friend of mine, J.D. Frejas, who I've had on my show, is yeah. working with you as a producer. Yes, sir. Um, so tell me what that's about, because that's that's more about the Cuban underworld as it uh, formed here in the United States, right? Exactly, yes. That, in many ways, is a story of what happened after the mafia got chased out of Cuba in 1959, and they established a criminal underworld in the United States. The story begins with the Bay of Pigs invasion, because that was the first and most dramatic attempt by anti-Castro forces to take back Cuba. Uh, it was a disaster by all accounts. Um, Castro knew that the brigade was coming and he was ready for them. And many of them got killed and others were held in prison for the next two years until the United States government could negotiate their release. So um, as you may know, that generation had a very strong sense of venganza, revenge. They wanted revenge um, for Castro taking the country, but also the humiliation of the Bay of Pigs invasion. And so an, under, an underground movement began that was in some ways political, but where it became criminal is with a man by the name of Jose Miguel Battle, who had been a member of the brigade. Um, and when he came to the United States, he formed um, a criminal operation around um, the idea of Bolita, a form of the lottery that was illegal and highly profitable for those who organized it and highly popular with the people. I mean, everyone bet the number. And it became a, a major uh, criminal operation. I mean, Battle was making millions and millions of dollars on a daily basis from this operation. And it involved a lot of Cubans who got involved in it as numbers, runners, members of the organization. It was always amazing to me that um, a lot of these immigrants and refugees 
many um, who were men of modest formal education, but they had the wherewithal to put together this very sophisticated business that was highly profitable and ultimately quite violent because as it became more and more lucrative for those involved in it, greed set in. And this resulted in rivalries, people stealing from the organization, and battle was ruthless. He enforced uh, discipline with, a, with an iron hand. So there were a lot of killings and that's what eventually put him on the map uh, of American law enforcement. Well, you know, I think it's 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 pretty cool, um, you know, as as a Cuban Cuban American to see, you know, an Anglo man to find, you know, Cuban history captivating. I think that with you know the Latin community in the United States, because uh, we come from from countries that speak Spanish, when we're trying to translate our stories, it's it's we we have that gap to fill, right? And and um, for someone like yourself to kind of bring these stories, and and especially with Cuba. Um, for people in this country to realize how intertwined American and Cuban history are. And I, I think yeah. it's, it's very cool. So, so I think that you're doing an awesome job of, of, of kind of like trying to help us bridge, bridge that gap so that, you know, American audiences can start tapping into Latin American stories and for me specifically Cuban stories because I feel there's, there's, a, there's a treasure trove there. Absolutely. Well, let me say something about that. You know, the, the Cuban story in particular, I think a lot of that has to do with the revolution and the nature of the revolution. And the revolution was a controversial event that created a kind of a, it politicized Cuban history, recent Cuban history. And so a lot of Cuban stories have been repressed or swept under the rug, or they're too political to talk about, or they're too loaded with emotion to talk about. And so there are tons of great stories of the Cuban experience yet to be told. And I hope Cubans, and Latinos and anyone who's excited to tell these stories will tell these stories. DJ, thank you so much. Uh, but I want people, you know, to go out, get the corporation, uh, get Havana Nocturne, so you can find out, you know, the real good stuff. And um, good luck to you as far as getting this to Hollywood. Awesome, man. Thank you so much, DJ. All right, guys, keep it locked because after the break, we talk to Lots. Spanish artist Okuda.